Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a double header and it's going to be a video on a topic that I've been kicking tires on for a while now. A couple people have asked me to do this video as well. Uh, so I do try to listen to you guys as much as I can. The video title is going to be Guilty Pleasure Fragrances. So basically fragrances that I shouldn't like where I'm at in my journey. Uh, the kind of stuff that I've told you guys that I like, let's say, for example, I've said I do not like sweet fragrances. These are going to be sweet fragrances. These are going to be designer fragrances, or they're going to be fragrances that people sort of look down on as lesser than because maybe they're hyped in the community and fragheads don't like to sort of wear what everyone else is wearing, or those kind of fragrances that have, you know, for me as a lover of unsweet vintage fragrances, many uh, associate me with Vintage Fragrance Love, Koros, Paco Rabanne, Paul, Antaeus, Bella Me, that kind of thing. And that's true. Those are really my heart fragrances. Those are the ones that I love the most. However, uh, these are fragrances that you would not think I like that I do like. So it's going to be an interesting video topic. I'm trying to think of unique ways to discuss different uh, fragrances with you guys because that's what it's about. It's just about doing what we love, which is talking about perfume. But first, we actually have a haul. And the haul comes straight from our good friend, Hari. And so I'm going to keep this down here. And we're going to open this bad boy up. And a uh, special shout out to Hari for being very fair with me on the uh, price. He obviously could have charged me much more than what he ended up charging. Um, and so one of the advantages of having a channel is that you meet people uh, like Armando, like Hari, like Rich, um, so many more people, uh, and, you know, that's, um, something obviously he could have, uh, probably put these on eBay and made even more money, but he wanted to keep them in the community, if you will, he wanted to keep them, uh, and he wanted me to have more fragrances to be able to talk about different fragrances with you guys. So, first of all, we are going to talk about a special gift that he included, and you all know that one of the houses, or not even houses, but I would say fragrance DNAs, right? Um, or sort of, um, you know, the type of house that I'm uh, really interested in exploring and getting to know are what I'm calling the artisanal houses. So houses like Ensar Oud, Aris La Dore, which I recently did the video on the history of Oud, and Aris La Dore is going to, that's under my live stream section, by the way, if you want to see my first impressions. And Russian Adam has agreed to come on the channel, which is an absolute blessing for everybody. So he's going to come on a live stream. We're going to get to ask him questions for hours and hours. Um, but this is a fragrance from Ensar. And this is called, well, it's actually a bunch of decants. So it's not called anything. It's uh, decants. And this is, so let's see what we have. Uh, these are great because... Uh, this is a way for me to smell a bunch of Ensar fragrances I've never smelled before. Uh, well, they're not all Ensars, but they're in the Ensar packaging. So this is actually uh, Digit and Zach, and this is called Tibetan Incense. Tibetan Incense. Do you guys know that one? I have uh, never heard of that, although that is a brand that I have not really dived into too much. So um, Tibetan Incense. Um, Tibetan, there we go, Tibetan Incense, that's a new one from 2023 actually, sweet, spicy, um, cinnamon, silver fir, Indian oud, cedar wood, smells good, interesting, uh, that's a brand that I need to get, dive more into, Digit and Zach, because they, uh, are very similar in construction with the Ensars and the Aris Ladores, although I wouldn't put them on the same level. I think they try to be on that level. Uh, so this is the new Bortnikov, Scheherazade. Amazing. I uh, can't wait to smell this. This is something I've been waiting for for a while. What's funny about it is actually another, um, another friend of the channel reached out and said that he would be willing to send me a decant of Scheherazade as well. So Scheherazade um, was actually done by the um, same gentleman that worked on some of Bortnikov's previous um, releases. They did like this, uh, I guess, duo 
uh, perfume duo. So if you've smelled, I think it was Tabak Dore or maybe a couple others, this gentleman sort of stepped in and I don't know what role he played to help Bortnikov, but um, Scheherazade is supposed to be a fruity, fresher sort of take, I guess, with still has the Indian sandalwood and the Malaysian oud and vanilla and cedar, but there's a black currant absolute and this sort of uh, fruity freshness in the top as well. Some apricot. I got some of the Digit and Zach on my fingers. It's very good, very spicy. Uh, and then we have, there's a bunch of samples in here. Uh, let's see, we have uh, Chinese Exclusive by Ensar. That's what I'm talking about. These will make great little videos because I can just dump them on my skin at night and talk about it before I go to bed. Um, so Chinese, I have to save these because if I don't, if I don't save these now, I will forget all about them. So I need to make sure that I have them saved. So Chinese exclusive is, um, Chinese oud, beeswax, sandalwood, vanilla, peach, mandarin orange, saffron, rose. Looks, looks beautiful. It was on my wish list, so I'm glad to have that as a decant. These were exciting. Uh, and then, ah, Omeros SQ. Is this the one that he actually made during lockdown? Um, man, I just want to smell all these. Omeros. Omeros, um, SQ. Blue Cypress, Civet, Hinoki Cypress, and Neroli, Elderflower, Georgian Rose, Jasmine, Musk, Mysore, Sandalwood, uh, Orange Blossom, and Osmanthus. With ambergris, Borneo, oud, bourbon, vanilla, Cambodian oud, Salinese, sandalwood, cacao, musk, mysore, sandalwood, oak moss, papau, oud, patchouli, Tibetan musk, tobacco, tolu balsam, and Tonkin musk. What a note breakdown. Um, I don't know what year this came out, but I seem to remember that uh, he mentioned that that Omeros came out in... Um, 2020 when the when the lockdown was happening, but I can't exactly remember. So here's Fragrance Dubois Oud Blue Intense. Interestingly enough, I did a video on this. There's a Fragrance Dubois live stream that you can go check out, and this is one of the ones that I sampled. I was not impressed, let's put it that way. Uh, and then there is Unique Luxuries Mango Nificent. Mango Nificent. I don't know if I really uh, made Hari angry and he decided to put that in there to, to get back at me. But uh, I have a live stream on Unique Luxury as well if you want to see what I think about that brand. It's one of my most hated brands. But you never know. Maybe I'll actually find one that I like. Um, Bortnikoff's Cologne de la Terre. So I did a video on this as well. There's actually a live stream on Bortnikoff's cologne series that he came out with. I was not very impressed, but you can go check it out. And here, here's one that I'm I'm very, very excited about. This is uh, Ensar's, Ensar Oud's Oud Sultani. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to try these Ensars. Uh, the Ensar and the Bortnikov are probably the ones that I'm most excited about. Um, so let's see, what's it called? I'm going to save, even though I don't want to, I'm going to save the Unique Luxury. Mang Mango Nificent is their new release, so uh, that should be a good bashing video, my guess. Um, and then Oud Sultani is, um, this one is Oud Sultani, just the regular Oud Sultani. Let's see, Oud Sultani Ensar. There we go. Is it Oud Sultani 1975? There's a bunch of Oud Sultanis. I don't know which one it is. If it's the Kel Kelenton or Oud Sultani 1975. I'm going to have to do some digging on this one. Ensar has a lot of fragrances. That is one thing I will say. He put out a lot of uh, fragrances. Um, he puts out a lot of stuff and then it runs out very quickly and then he puts out more stuff, but I know he's using very rare ingredients. But Oud Sultani, um, let's see, Oud Sultani. Yeah, there's a couple of them. I'm not sure which one this is. I'm gonna guess it's just, ah, here's regular Oud Sultani. Just says Oud. 
That's it, just Oud. And uh, this is Ensar Oud's Archipelagio. We'll see if I can squeeze a drop out of that just, just to do a video on it one day. Uh, or maybe I can hunt down a couple drops on my own. But uh, Archipelagio is um, just Borneo Oud, Malaysian Oud, and Papau Oud. So I think that's a rare one. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the decants, my friend. Those are great. All right, so that's the starter. That's the that's the warm up video. That's the warm up. That's the uh, appetizer, if you will. Um, those NSARs are are glorious. I'm I'm definitely starting there. If I uh, get a chance to do some late night insight videos soon, I've been having to go to the office, and so waking up early has uh, has really put a hamper on being able to stay up late and do videos for you guys. All right, let me put these back. This is a cool little Ensar Oud pouch uh, holder. All right, so that is the sample. Now to the to the main event. Uh, so here is the main event, and handy dandy unboxing knife. Don't fail me now, baby. All right, so the first bottle is going to be. A Histoise de Parfum, one of the Histoise de Parfum that I do not have in the collection, and this is called 1969. Are you guys familiar with this one? I rarely hear anyone talk about 1969. Um, the notes listed are, well, let me just pull it up. Let's see. There are notes listed on the bottle, too, but uh, 1969. Um, 2006 release. It is peach, fruits, rose, cardamom, clove, white blossoms, chocolate, patchouli, coffee, and white musk. Um, more than enough to do a full review and get to know the scent. So that should be that should be good stuff. Uh, the perfumer is Sylvie Jordet and Gerard Gisalain, who is the owner and creative director of the brand, from what I know. Uh, so that's one I'm very excited to, uh, to, to get to know. I really like this house. It's a house that I think is very underrated, and um, so I'm always excited to get to know more of their work. All right, so that's 1969. And then there is a fragrance from a house that I really don't know too well. I only own one from this house. This is the house of 4160 uh, Tuesdays. And this is called uh, something chocolate shop. Oh man, it is Nesquik chocolatey is basically what it smells like. 4160 Tuesdays chocolate. Over the chocolate shop is what this one is called. Uh, look at the color of that juice. Extremely dark and it's a very dark coffee chocolate, hazelnut, and vanilla. It actually smells really good from the atomizer. Uh, Sarah McCartney is the perfumer who I uh, am not the biggest fan of. She's a big Ifra proponent, um, but I always give everyone a fair shake. And so, and I do own one of her fragrances I ended up buying on my own. It was called, um, this one is uh, Shazam. Shazam is, uh, is, is a really interesting, fresh, Patchouli, you know, if you want a fresh patchouli, that kind of thing. So, um, so yes. All right. So next, next on the list, next on the list, we have, come on, unboxing knife. Don't fail me now, baby. I can feel the blade, like, I can feel it starting to, to, to rattle a little bit. All of these unboxings. All right, here we go. Well wrapped, Hari. Very, very well wrapped, sir. Extremely well wrapped. Okay. So the first one on the list is actually Roja's Oman. So, I was very lucky to procure a bottle. This is one of my um, 
This is one of my favorite incenses, I'll tell you that. Um, and so I was very lucky to procure a bottle of the vintage Oman um, right here. So this is what the old bottle looks like. And this is actually what the new one looks like. Um, maybe even a head-to-head -head comparison video one day I see in my future. I actually don't think there are big differences. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I don't think there are big differences at all. Uh, because I have a 7.5 mil Discovery Atomizer of the newer juice. And it's, um, it is very, very, very close. There may be some very slight differences. But um, I, don't, I don't think enough for me to tell you to go run out and pay big money for the vintage or anything like that. But that's Roja's Oman, one of my favorite incenses. And then a Roja that uh, I've been hunting for for a while, but I have not been able to find yet until today. And this is actually called Rosa, Roja's H, the exclusive black tear. I might actually wear that tomorrow. Um, uh, this is... Um, this is compared to one of his, um, this is compared to one of his perfumes that I've actually done a, um, I've actually done a review on called O, oh, the Exclusive Parfum. It's discontinued, but uh, H Black Tear, so H, the Exclusive Black Tear. The H originally, I think originally the, um, the H Exclusive stood, H stood, stands for Herod's Exclusive. Um, I don't know if that's still sort of, uh, ex exclusive to Herod's, but, um, H the exclusive black tier came out in 2016 and the note listing is actually very, very close to, O oh, the exclusive. So it's interesting that, uh, again, I, I talked about these similarities in previous Rosia reviews. Go watch my most recent review, um, I just recently did a uh, Roja review. It was called uh, Goodman's. Uh, he did an exclusive for Goodman's, which I believe is discontinued according to Parfumo. Um, but I mentioned how many of these Rojas share similarities. If you sort of know the line and you've smelled a lot, you'll pick up these similarities. And this has very similar note listings to that Oh, the Exclusive Parfum. They both have that raspberry which will remind you a little bit of fragrances like um, it gets compared actually to the moon. But if you've smelled O oh, the Exclusive Parfum, you'll sort of have an example of the way that this style was created. But um, there are some differences. They're not exactly the same, but it has that, you know, leathery uh, DNA. And so H the Exclusive Black Tear, I need to get to know. I need to wear this very soon. So, excited to have that one. I've been hunting that one for a while. And then, a fragrance that uh, I've never, actually I've never smelled anything from this house. I don't know what is the deal with this house. I don't know if they are still uh, in business or if they're all discontinued, but I know they used to be exclusives to a department store called Barney's. And I think Barney's ran into some financial trouble. I don't know what's going on with this house, but the house is called Fong Dang. That's how the signature looks, Fong Dang. And these are what the bottles look like. You may have seen these before. Uh, and this particular one is called Untamed Oud. And it's actually a Bertrand du Chaffour creation. So, um... A couple things. These were extremely expensive um, fragrances when you could get them only at Barney's. Now, I think that um, the hype and all of that stuff has really di died down. It says it's still available for purchase, so I honestly have no clue. I, uh, I don't know what the deal is with this house. I have to do some research, but it's tar, rum, cumin, coriander seed with apple, clove, honey, narcissus, absolute, rose, and hawthorn with oud, tobacco, oak moss, tonka bean, absolute, vanilla, absolute, ambergris, atlas, cedar, musk, and cypriol. So it's a Bertrand du Chaffour. He's one of my favorite perfumers. My guess is that I will like it, but I hear that house is not as high quality as even like something like, you know, this. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And then finally, the final unboxing final package here 
All right, come on, unboxing knife. Don't fail me now, baby. Your service is still needed. Ah. Yeah. All right, here we go, baby. So, to begin with, this, this is the Tom Ford box, by the way. Um, so this one, come on, man, one more cut. All right. All right, so this is something you all have heard of, but I have not had in the collection. This is a original 2017, I believe, bottle when it first came out, whenever it originally came out. He said he just ran out and bought this. This is Ombre Leather. So this is the original Ombre Leather. Um, I like this fragrance. I'll tell you that. This is a fragrance that uh, obviously it gets compared to Tuscan Leather, and rightly so. Um, they share some similarities. Some people call it uh, Tuscan Leather Light, if you will. Um, but Ombre Leather for me is... Uh, I think it's a good fragrance. It uh, originally came out in 2000 and... So it actually originally came out in 2016 as a um, as a private label. And then in 2018, they released it in this bottle, which you'll see in Sephora's and stuff like that. Um, so yes, I'm a, I'm a fan of Ombre Leather. Long story short, this is the 2018 version. Uh, I don't know if it has been, you know, reformulated since then or anything like that, but uh, I can tell you that it's jasmine, sambac, saffron, cardamom, black leather, patchouli, vetiver, amber, and white moss, and it's a Sonia Constant creation of Givaudan. And if you look, actually, on these older bottles, I don't know if they all have this. I, I didn't notice this when I looked at the newer bottles of ombre leather, but this actually looks like a piece of leather. Um, you'll have to, you'll have to forgive me if the new ones are like that, but I didn't notice that before. Um, either way, good, um, good fragrance. I, as a leather lover, it's an easy sell for me. Okay, and then the two that were harder to track down, um, these, uh, obviously I talked about, um, one of these I actually got as a fragrance just a couple of, um, months back. And I said I've been hunting it down forever. It's one of my favorite amber fragrances. And, oh, it's so good. If you've smelled, um, so if you've smelled some of the other Tom Ford fragrances that were ambery, like Sahara Noir, which that's high on my list right now. I still haven't been able to find a bottle. You'll, you'll, you'll know kind of the DNA, but this is Amber Absolute. So it's a backup bottle of Amber Absolute. The juice is about right here. So now I have a 50 mil that's relatively full and probably 20, 25 mils. Um, so I'm happy. This is, uh, this to me is maybe one of the only leathers that can compete with my favorite leather of all time, which is this, Ombre Sultan. So I have three bottles of Ombre Sultan, two of Amber Absolute. I feel like I'm set on, on these fragrances. These are my favorite ambers, but I would still love to hunt down a bottle of uh, Sahara Noir. That was a fantastic labdanum. Both of these have this, um, uh, there is a similarity, but uh, I'll, I'll do I'll do full reviews eventually, but man, big fan, and you can see the gold numbering on the, the gold lettering and numbering on the bottom. If the batch code's in gold, it basically means it's one of the older bottles, so stoked to have Amber Absolute in the collection. Backed up, so thank you, Hari. And finally, uh, the new one to the collection, which I'm very, very excited about, is this little bad boy. This is probably 80% full. Uh, this is Plum Japanay. And Plum Japanay is uh, one of those discontinued Tom Fords that people go crazy for. I can tell you, without ever having truly worn this as my scent of the day, do not pay what they're asking for on eBay. It's it's insane prices. Um, you know, it is, uh, it's it's just nuts. Some of that is just absolutely nuts. I uh, told this story on a previous video, but I'll tell you again because it bears repeating. There was a fragrance that a, a guy next to me uh, was talking about, and he said he bought it, I don't know, a decade ago or something at Walgreens for 20 bucks, 
and I told him to look it up. It was a Tim McGraw fragrance and uh, came out in 2008. It's discontinued now and they're selling it for, you know, $300, $350 online for like a set. Insane. Uh, because it's discontinued. It's freaking Tim McGraw fragrance, right? Uh, I've never smelled it. I'm not saying it's bad or good, but uh, Plum Japanay came out a decade ago and it is a uh, plum liqueur, fruity, spicy fragrance with some vanilla, um, Laotian cinnamon, fur balsam absolute, benzoin siam, oud, saffron, vanilla absolute, amber immortel, Japanese camellia, which interestingly enough, my scent of the day is a camellia flower scent, and sawara cypress. So very interesting note listing. It was created by Jan Fasnir, who I think is an up and coming kind of star. Uh, and I am stoked to have Plum Japanese, so I can wear it, get to know it, and talk about it in the future on the channel. Okay, so that's my haul. So that's the first half of the video. So, uh, again, special thank you to Hari for, uh, being very fair with me on the prices. He obviously could have, um, taken advantage of me further, but, uh, that was very, very fair. Okay, so let's get, uh, let's get started. So let's talk about my uh, Guilty Pleasure Fragrances. Okay, so everyone, I guess, technically has a different uh, Guilty Pleasure, if you will, uh, because everyone has uh, different things that they usually don't go for. And so for me, what I usually don't go for, I'm going to put this away so I don't lose it. What I uh, usually don't go for is sweetness. So sweetness for me is usually a no-no. When I smell like super sweetness in a, in a fragrance, it puts me off. Or as I've grown in my, um, as I've grown in my knowledge of fragrance history and smelled a lot of different things and sort of my Rolodex of fragrances up here has grown, uh, maybe some of the more simple designer things you would say I've pushed to the side, right? Or you would expect to push to the side or say you don't like it anymore, like you've outgrown that type of fragrance. However, these are fragrances that are sweet. Many of them are sweet. Many of them are still very designer in creation. And you know what? Sometimes you don't need a fragrance with a Swarovski crystal cap, even though it is beautiful. I will admit, uh, it's a beautiful presentation. You don't need that. Sometimes you just want uh, a nice, well-made designer, easy to wear. Or sometimes you do want a sweet fragrance. It's a guilty pleasure. That's what this video is about. So let's start with scent of the day. This is not on the guilty pleasure list, but this is what I wore as my scent of the day today. And it actually has a camellia flower note as well. And it is Opus 9. And I did wear this to work, believe it or not. Um, it's an animalic floral fragrance. It was created by two of my favorite perfumers, Pierre Nagrin and Nathalie Lorson. And I've got a little, I brought this actually. Well, I brought another one that I actually killed off because I had three of them. And um, so it comes with this little booklet interestingly enough, and the booklet tells a little bit about the scent. So what they say, the Amouage Library Collection, is that Opus 9 is inspired by La Traviata, and Opus 9 is a soulful interpretation of the camellia flower. So the top notes are camellia chord, black pepper, and jasmine, guyac wood, beeswax, and leather in the heart with gray amber, so ambergris, civet, and vetiver. And this fragrance right here um, almost really convinces me that Nathalie Lorson should be the nose, the in-house perfumer of one of the big houses. She should have been the perfumer at Dior instead of Francis Kirk John, uh, in my opinion, because creating something like this is such a special fragrance. This is, yes, it's floral, um, and for those of you that don't know, the camellia flower is a mute flower. It doesn't smell. Um, so almost like, you know, in the old days, they tried to recreate the smell of a fern for a fougere. Here with Opus 9, they tried to recreate the smell of a camellia flower. What would it smell? What would it smell like if they could create, uh, if the camellia flower had a smell? Okay. So this is what they came up with. And it's interesting because if you've smelled Nathalie Lorson's previous works, for things like Ancre Noir, if you've smelled um, This Is Him by Zadig and Voltaire, the incense one, um, you know, that, that sort of DNA 
sort of shines through a little bit here because you get she loves black pepper okay if you smell what she did with trisardi inside man uh this sort of peppery top is is here but it dries into this you know this animalic beeswax leathery floral woody uh animalic it's it's such a interesting scent and the materials are so high class, but the blend and the way that Pierre Negrin and Nathalie Lorson sort of put, put it together, outstanding. Um, love Opus 9. I'm worried that it is probably going to get the axe because it doesn't seem like it's being put into the new bottles. But if you can find Opus 9 at a fair price uh, and you love animalic florals, you will not be disappointed. That is one of the best in my opinion. And I did wear it to work today. So it is it is somewhat versatile, but I think it's probably mostly a, a night out, like a going out scent. Okay, so first one on my list of guilty pleasures. It's a new fragrance. I've worn it to bed um, <clears throat> and I do like it, but it is sweet. I will tell you that right off the bat. It is extremely sweet and uh, it's a gourmand too. Two things that uh, most of the time I thumb my nose at, but uh, this is from the house of Hermes and it's called Ombre Narguilé. Now, Ombre Narguilé is a Jean-Claude Elena creation. Uh, speaking of Jean-Claude Elena, he has a new Frederick Mall perfume out called Heaven Can Wait. Love the name. Um, and love the note listing. It, there's an iris note in there, and I, I cannot wait to smell Heaven Can Wait. Uh, I still haven't even smelled Uncut Gem, so I'm falling behind on my Frederick Mall um, homework. However, that's one that's definitely on the list. But this is a very interesting scent because it's basically this amber roasted sesame seeds, um, which the um, the uh, National Dish Dish of Jordan, where I was born, is a, a dish called mensuf, and it's like lamb with um, uh, with this dried yogurt called Jameed. And the women basically spent all day making it. And I remember what a culture shock it was for me the very first time I ate mensuf in Jordan uh, because the women spend all day making it and then the men eat first. And as an American, I am not used to that. It made no sense to me. And I was also a little kid back then um, when we went, last time we went. But, well, not a little kid, but I was much, much younger. And uh, I just remember thinking how crazy it was that my aunts spent all day cooking and it's the men that eat first and then the women come and eat. I didn't understand that as an American. But they're, they um, use sesame seeds and they use um, pine nuts and stuff like that to sort of uh, season it, right? And it has this very carnal-like smell. Warm, sensual, enveloping is what, um, uh, is what Base Notes says about it. And... And it's it's a correct uh, explanation. Jean-Claude Elena says he wanted to imbue this idea of amber with the memory of the East. I love by recreating the ambiance of those lively places where tobacco blended with the smells of fruit, honey, and spices is smoked in narguilés or water pipes and where swirls of smoke diffuse a sweet sensation of intoxication. So, obviously, many people consider this as a winter scent because it's so ambery and spicy and uh, fruity. And the tobacco note's on point. It's a Jean-Claude Elena. I mean, uh, the, the knock on this is that it's extremely sweet and it smells like apple pie. And it does. It does have an apple pie like gourmand, you know, sweetness. But when you get into the details and you get into the sesame seed, the uh, tobacco, you know, the fruits, the honey-like aspect of it, the spices. I like this. This is a this is a win in my book. Maybe even slightly boozy. I'm not going to say there's a boozy note in here because it's not listed. But there is a sense of this. He they use the word um, blended with the smells of fruit, honey, and spices is smoked in narguilés or water pipes and swirls, and where swirls of smoke diffuse a sweet sensation of intoxication. Intoxication is almost like a key word, I think, because even though there's no booziness, just imagine, imagine if you could make apple pie wine. That would be a good representation of what it smells like. Apple pie wine. Oh, it's so good. Um, yes, yeah, so, Ombre Narguilé is first on the list. All right, next on the list is a uh, Lamal fragrance. And I hate Lamal. I hate the original Lamal. 
Uh, probably my two favorite Lamals are Fleur du Mal, which gets almost no love, but it is a, I, I know why, you know, it's, um, it's a, it, it can be a challenging fragrance because there's this white floral note in there that can put some people off. But this is my other favorite Lamal fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier that very few people talk about. And I should hate this fragrance because it's everything that I hate. It's sweet. It's designer-ish. It can be considered kind of this droning on. Uh, it's very, uh, it lasts forever. Uh, but I love it. And it's called Lamal Essence de Parfum. It was actually in the thumbnail. And the Essence de Parfum is discontinued, believe it or not. They um, had the 125 mil testers on fragrancebuy.ca uh, last year, and I picked up a bottle. And um, I'm glad I did. It's cardamom, Georgie wood, which is a captive molecule um, that, who owns? Who owns Georgie wood? Uh, Givaudan. It was developed by Givaudan and it has an intense clean and woody smell. So it's like a dichotomy, clean and woody. And um, bergamot with leather, osmanthus, tonka bean, vanilla. Those are the sort of four main uh, notes that you'll pick up, especially the uh, leather, osmanthus, and vanilla. That tonka, that, that um, how would you say it? That sort of designery Tonka uh, vanilla thing, which is where I should hate the fragrance, but I don't. I absolutely, I absolutely love this. It's uh, definitely a guilty pleasure. Okay, next on the list of guilty pleasures, this is a house that gets absolutely butchered in Fragcom. And you know what? I am strong enough to stand on my feet and say, I like these fragrances. I wear them. I like them. Even though they get bashed, I don't care. I can enjoy... You know, I am, uh, I try to enjoy lots of different types of perfumes. I, you know, you can't be so bougie and, uh, you know, hoity-toity that uh, you get to the point where you stop enjoying. Once you stop enjoying the hobby, that's where you won't see me anymore. That's where, you know, uh, I'm not going to keep doing these videos. This is a pleasure. This is a hobby. This is an enjoyment for me. And that's exactly what I get out of fragrances like this, even though... It gets bashed, even though it's sweet, even though I should not like it, I do. And it's from the House of Parfum de Marly, and it's called Herod. And Herod is a creation by Olivier Peshot, who actually have a um, perfumer's portfolio video on him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Olivier Peshot did Herod in 2012. And this is uh, cinnamon with another captive molecule called pepperwood. And guess what pepperwood smells like? Um, well, you've got it. It's uh, It basically has this peppery, woody-like profile that's also a Givaudan ingredient. It has this woody, peppery odor profile, and it's mixed with tobacco, frankincense, osmanthus, cystus, vanilla, cedarwood, musk, cipriol, patchouli, and vetiver. And I have done my fair share of bashing Parfums de Marly, and they deserve it most of the times. Um, however, here, this is one where sometimes when I want that tobacco, that vanillic tobacco for the cold, uh, slightly sweet, I love Osmanthus too. That is one thing I will mention with both of these. Uh, they both have an Osmanthus note, and that may be what pushes them over the top. Uh, Osmanthus gives off this sort of peachy, nectarine leathery, slightly animalic profile. And um, it's in both of these fragrances. There's also Cipriol, as I mentioned, which uh, I, I also really like as a note. And so um, Herod, I think, is a uh, one of the best Parfum de Marly fragrances. And then I'm also not going to shy away from fragrances that are hyped in the community, okay? So some reviewers and some people in the community, as soon as something gets popular, they go away from it because they just can't be wearing what everyone else is. And I can't do that. I don't think that's right. If I like something, I'm going to like it whether one person's wearing it or a thousand people are wearing it. Now, um, it is in my nature to go against the grain. So if I'm saying I like these kind of fragrances, you know that uh, I, I like the fragrance um, because it's in my nature to be a contrarian. So when people start saying they like it, I have to watch myself to... to start going the other way just because the crowd is, is you know, ganging up and saying they like it. But I, I actually do like this, and I think it's a good younger man scent, okay? If you want to smell youthful, if you want to smell, um, you know, like you're 
uh, tuned in to the times, like you're hip. Anyone who says hip is not hip. So there you have it. But if you want to smell like you are, this is it. Layton. And Layton is a 2016 release from Hamid Marathi Kashani of Fermanish. What a name. But he created an absolute hit. This is Layton's best, or this is uh, Parfum de Marley's bestseller, from my understanding. It's apple with lavender, mandarin orange, bergamot, geranium, jasmine, and violet with vanilla, cardamom, guyac wood, patchouli, pink pepper, and sandalwood. And there's a fragrance we're going to talk about later on that is on this guilty pleasure video that I think influenced Layton. My opinion, just one Ram's opinion, but uh, when we get to it, I'll let you know what that is. But Layton has this obviously fruity, creamy, lavender. It's slightly professional while also being very mass appealing, if you will. So it walks that line. It's almost like um, you just graduated college and you got your first serious job, right? Uh, and you are dressed for success. Let's say you don't have the pendant. You're dressed for success and uh, you are ready to go hit the workforce and make your mark on the world. But you don't really want to start wearing Boss Number no. One or uh, Antaeus or Koros or something like that. You still want to wear something youthful, but also that portrays a slight amount of gravity to it. That's where I think Layton can come in. Now, it could also smell like you're at a college bar sometimes. Um, but you know what? I like it. Uh, I do like Layton, and I'm not going to shy away and say I don't just because it's easy to bash the fragrance. So this can be sort of a guilty pleasure for me. I don't uh, I don't talk about it often on the channel, but I like it. Uh, okay, next is some designers from the House of Guerlain. Now, my favorite Guerlains of all time are the vintage stuff. The vintage masculines like Heritage, Abbey Rouge, Vetiver, um, and the vintage feminine fragrances like Mitsuko, Shalimar, uh, Le Bleu, um, I mean, you name it, Val de Nui, the list goes on, right? These are two designers. I should not like the designers, okay? Uh, but I do. There's two that I actually really like, and they're both relatively sweet. They're both from the Loam line. And the first one I'm going to show you is from 2016, and it's called Loam Ideal Eau de Parfum. Now, Loam Ideal Eau de Parfum is basically uh, Guerlain's Guerlain doing a um, designer fragrance, but still sort of keeping that Guerlainade, Guerlain DNA. Because what does this have? This has almond and this has vanilla. And those two notes are, uh, especially vanilla, no one does vanilla like Guerlain, as far as I'm concerned. Nobody. Uh, and so this is slightly spicy, but you get a little bit of rose, a little bit of frankincense, and it's that Tonka bean, though. So it's vanilla and Tonka. It's almost like, a, imagine having a slightly cherried, there's a little bit of a cherry feel to Loam Ideal Eau de Parfum. So imagine this slightly sweet, cherried, almondy, um, very slightly leathery Tonka, designer fragrance Tonka. I like this better than the Eau de Toilette. And even though it's sweet, it has a beautiful sandalwood in the dry down. Uh, sometimes it can be tough to pick out because the Tonka is just so sweet in the base. But uh, that almondy, cherry-like, um, you know, vanilla is a Guerlain hallmark. And I think this is a very posh fragrance. Uh, again, if you want to have a slight air of, I would say, sophistication, you want to wear something that most people aren't wearing, but still have a slightly youthful side, this is a great pick. And, and then they put out a flanker in 2020, and I actually really like this flanker. Um, this flanker is called Loam Ideal Extreme. So the new version of the Extreme um, has a black cap instead of a red one, and it has a silver almost like sticker. They made even the stickers uniform. So no more, you know, one being gray, one being red. So LVMH even made the stickers uniform. They just sort of changed the names now. Um, but Loam Ideal Extreme is a flanker done by Thierry Vassar, and it keeps the almond, and it keeps a little bit of the leather in the dry down. Maybe it even keeps a little bit of that cherry vibe, but it adds this um, tobacco and pink pepper. So there's pink pepper, 
and tobacco with plum. So they add plum, tobacco, pink pepper, and the note of heliotrope. And heliotrope makes it almost like a Play-Doh-y vibe. It makes it almost squishy, right? The, the fragrance now has, has this extra volume to it. This is already slightly thick and syrupy because of the tonka. And you can make the case that tonka here maybe even has a slight tobacco tinge to it. But they've amped it up in a way that now you know for sure you're smelling this tobacco. Um, and it's a very well done, sweet, um, let's say wintry tobacco for the designer realm. And even though this is a niche, it smells almost like it's a designer fragrance. Uh, and, and these two, you could say, could be interchangeable. You could wear them for similar situations. Um, there's a little bit of patchouli in the base as well of, of Lone Ideal Extreme. I think it's, it's, I actually think that this is my favorite version of Lone Ideal. I even like it just a hair over the Eau de Parfum. Many people say this is the best version of Lone Ideal, but for me, uh, I would actually take the extreme because I think that it adds a little bit of this uh, depth and sophistication to the fragrance. This is a great fragrance, don't get me wrong, but sometimes it can feel a little boring, okay? Sometimes. And I think the extra tobacco and the plum and the heliotrope just sort of uh, keep it more interesting to me. But this is sweet. Uh, both of these are extremely sweet. So again, I should hate them. I don't. They're, they're a guilty pleasure. Yeah, very nice stuff. Okay, so next on the list of guilty pleasure fragrances is a clone house. Clone houses get, uh, some. sometimes there are people that hype clone houses because of the fact that they're paid to, or they get free bottles from these clone houses, or, you know, whatever the reason may be, and they're just dishonest. Like, they don't really feel the way they're saying. The fragrance doesn't really smell like Dolce & Gabbana by man, or, you know, Gucci... Uh, Poor Ohm Part 1 from 2003. It doesn't smell like that, but they'll tell you it does. Um, and then on the other side of the equation, there are people that are like, I will never wear a clone house. Absolutely not. It's, you know, no way. Um, and I fall, um, I'm not as hard-lined as the people that say never will I wear a clone because I've smelled some of these clones. And some of them really, I think, are good fragrances. I think that Armaf or, um, you know, Latafa or these brands, they get a bad rep just because of their name. I think if you blindfolded people and let them smell something like this, they would be pretty impressed. And the fragrance that I'm going to recommend you try if you hate clones or if you've never given these um, Arabic houses a chance uh, is this. This is called Armaf Niche Oud. And it's a little bit of a misnomer because this has nothing to do with Oud. So I should hate this because this is a uh, clone house, right? It's a clone and I'm above wearing a clone. I have 700 bottles in the collection, 800 bottles, whatever it is. I shouldn't be wearing a clone, uh, but I am. Oh, you know what? This fragrance is actually in the same category. I'm not saying it smells as good, but I'm saying it's in the same category as stuff like this. Amber Absolute, um, or I mentioned Ombre Sultan by uh, Serge Duton. That's what throws people off. They they read niche oud, and they expect it to be more like oud, more like maybe like a oud wood or, you know, something like that, Versace Porom Noir oud or whatever. Um, but this actually is an amber. To me, it's an amber. It's a, it's a um, spicy... Uh, very masculine amber too because it has caraway and it has the note of um, sage. So it has caraway and it has sage. And uh, what what really I think pushes this over the top for me is it has the note of iris. And iris is such a beautiful note. It adds this third dimension. And so you get this um, this, to me, even though it's not listed as a note, you get this big labdanum, huge labdanum, which I love. I love labdanum. It's one of my favorite notes. Labdanum and vanilla with leather in the base. And this very masculine, um, spicy sage, caraway, and other spices, which they're not listing. Um, and it's just 
beautiful. I'm telling you, it's it's uh it's a spicy amber that if you were blindfolded, you would think you're smelling something way above its weight class. So this is a guilty pleasure of mine because I should hate an arm off, but I don't because uh, I actually smelled this. I gave it a chance. I smelled it and I was like, holy shit, I need a bottle. And here's the bottle. Okay, so another fragrance that I should hate because it's, you know, at discounters for 20 or 30 bucks sometimes, but I don't. I love it. I actually think it's one of my favorite uh, Neroli Petit Grand executions. And this is a cheapie, okay? Uh, but I love this stuff. It actually is what stopped me from buying a bottle of Terre de Hermes for as long as I did. This is Dunhill's Icon. I love Icon. I think uh, it's Car one of Carlos Benayim's best work. It came out in 2015. Neroli Absolute with black pepper, Italian bergamot, petit gras, cardamom, juniper berry, provincial lavender, sage, oak moss, vetiver, iris, leather, and oud. And this fragrance to me is one of the best Neroli fragrances you can buy. Uh, I could recommend some other things which are discontinued. You'll pay hundreds and hundreds instead of 20 or 30 bucks. Um, but I'll tell you what, this is um, one of Dunhill's best. This is Dunhill putting themselves back on the map. They had Dunhill for Men 1934, which I have a, a, a vintage um, bottle on the way. I can't wait to smell that. I have a modern bottle. It's discontinued according to Parfumo. I do have a modern bottle I'm not as impressed with. But, um, but yes, I mean, this is Dunhill putting themselves back on the map as far as I'm concerned. And it opens up with this slightly, almost like, like, imagine you're smelling a slightly uh, grape soda e vibe. And I love cola fragrances. I love this soda vibe and fragrances. And here, it's almost like a grape soda. Um, but then it, that's where you start to, it starts to bring in the, um, that Neroli smell, which can sometimes smell like uh, cheap laundry detergent, or it doesn't have any of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful office scent. Okay. Next on the list is a Tom Ford, and this is Tobacco Vanille. Okay, so Tobacco Vanille is uh, a sweet scent. And again, it's a sweet gourmand. So you would not expect that I would like this, but I actually love this. In fact, I, I was like, you know what? I really like this DNA, but is the Tom Ford worth it? Let me go try something like this. And so what I did is I bought this. This is Amar Oud's Oud Tabak. It literally smells like tobacco vanille with frankincense. That's what it smells like. And is it a decent fragrance? Yes, it's decent. But you know what? I was craving this DNA. I wanted this. I wanted tobacco vanille itself. I even bought another, um, another clone or inspired by fragrance from the house of Frank Bocklet called Tobacco. And um, it didn't fulfill me. I mean, it's it's good. It's a good fragrance. I'm not saying it's bad, but I wanted the OG. So again, a fragrance I should hate, a sweet gourmand. I ended up absolutely loving. Um, tobacco vanille is something else. It it It's uh, Olivier Guillotine, probably uh, Olivier's best fragrance. It's vanilla, tobacco, dried fruits, cacao, ginger, resins, and tonka bean. Um, let's see, where is... Where is next on where is next on the list? I think I'm losing my mind. Um, ah, here we go. Next on the list is Fiji. Because we need to hydrate. Okay. Continuing on with the uh, guilty pleasure video. So next on the list is uh, a Carolina Herrera fragrance. And if you know my taste in leather, you know I like things like Antaeus or Bellamy or Leonard Pour Homme. Those are, those are my favorite leathers. Or, or even, you know, Zerjoff Homme. That's a great leather. Or Santa Maria Novella's Peau d'Espagne, which I am looking for a vintage gold foil label. I will find myself a bottle of that one day. That is like high on my list. I actually found one of the unicorns. I'm not going to tell you which one, but there is a unicorn coming um, but, uh, that, that Santa Maria Novella Po de Spagna is high on my list. I want the gold foil label version for collector's purposes. Some people say, oh, the modern stuff is fine. That's, that's great. Uh, and maybe I'll do a comparison video one day, but I want the vintage. I want the gold foil. 
Um, so I'm hunting it. But those are the kind of leathers that you would expect me to like, not this. This is Carolina Herrera's CH Men. The old ones had this little thing here. The new ones almost had it like stapled to the, um, it looks like it is like uh, stapled to the, to the, to the bottom right or, or bottom part. I don't know which side, but uh, this little, this little thing was uh, done away with. So that's a way to tell if it's an older or newer bottle. And um, so this is basically a grassy, violety, sweet, saffron leather. Okay, there's a lot of vanilla. There's a lot of cashmere, cashmere in. Um, it's very, very sweet, extremely sweet. So it's like this green grass-like violet fragrance with um, spices, saffron. It's very modern. It's a very modern leather. And yet, I still love it. Uh, is it the best leather fragrance I've smelled? No. Uh, would I buy this again after I buy after this is done? No. But am I glad to have this? Yes, absolutely. And I want to do a video for you guys. Of course, I want to review all my fragrances. But um, but yeah, I still I still enjoy it. It's still actually being marketed. It's still available for purchase. I don't know what the new one's like. Okay, so I told you guys earlier there was a fragrance that I think influenced Leighton. Okay? This is the one. This is the one. And this is an Olivier Polge fragrance. And he created this a couple years after creating... Dior Homme, uh, the original Dior Homme in 2005. This is F by Ferragamo Pour Homme Black. Okay, F by Ferragamo Pour Homme Black. And um, so F Black is a 2009 release, and it's lavender, apple, black pepper, lavender absolute, coriander seed, tonka bean, and labdanum. And I actually think that there were a couple fragrances that Jeremy Fragrance used to hype, okay, back in the day. This was one of them, okay? Uh, and this is one of the fragrances that I think he actually got right. I think this is a great designer. This is discontinued. Bottles of this go for hundreds now on eBay. Believe it or not, it's insane. Again, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier about Tim McGraw. Just something gets discontinued, bam, it's hundreds. And, um, but I do think this is a good designer scent. Used to be able to, I got this at TJ Maxx or something for like 15 bucks. This is a 30 mil. That's a 30 mil. Um, so yes, but I do smell some, to me, I smell some similarities with Leighton. Leighton almost seems like a niche version of, uh, F by Ferragamo Pour Homme Black. Okay. Next on the list, we have... This little bad boy, again, a cheapie. You wouldn't think I would like this because it's got some sweetness to it and it's seen as cheap in the uh, in the community. It's a, it's a $30 fragrance at discounters, but I absolutely love it. It's Bentley for Men Intense. Uh, fantastic for the cold. One of the best boozy, spicy, woody fragrances. Nathalie Lorson strikes again. And, I, and, I, and when I was talking a little bit about Amouage uh, Opus 9, I mentioned kind of her style, this uh, black pepper uh, top mixed with the way that she does this sort of woodiness in the base with patchouli. Um, and you can smell, you can smell her uh, style, sort of that, uh, that contrast with this black pepper and musk and, and woods in the base. And it's very distinct. She has a very distinct way of using Black pepper, I think, is uh, one of the things that she really, she very, very rarely did she, I, I don't think she really implemented the love of pink pepper like the rest of the community. She loves using that black pepper, and it makes her fragrances very distinct. Uh, but I absolutely love Bent Bentley for Men. Intense from 2013. I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's an absolute joy to wear. Sometimes you don't need anything. You, a $30 fragrance is perfectly fine. And don't think because it's $30, it's cheap. That's the other thing. Um, as far as guilty pleasures go, some people will say, oh, this is a guilty pleasure because it's a $500 perfume. And I know exactly what you mean by saying that. But I think some people say in their head, this is a $500 perfume. So that means it must be better. And that's not always the case in the fragrance world. That's what makes this so tough is objectively, formula-wise, this may actually not be that much more expensive than this. 
there may just be a lot of marketing going on and, and stuff like that. Although I'm sure the ingredients are a little bit better. You know, the um, maybe captive molecules that they're using are, or, or maybe there's some uh, synthetics that they just don't allow some of the perfumers to use. So the perfumers working on this have the right to use a molecule that others won't or, or all kind of things like that could be happening. But, um, but yes, for me, this is a, this is definitely a guilty pleasure. Um, especially at the $30 mark. What a steal. Okay. Speaking of guilty pleasures and speaking of, um, sweet fragrances, this is a fragrance that came out in the early 2000s and it's called Rochas Man. Okay. So Rochas Man is created by Maurice Roussel. I lied. It was, um, 1999. This came out. The early 2000s is um, Bond number no. nines, New Harlem, which came out a couple years after that and, and is basically a niche version of Rochas Man. So I would love a vintage bottle of New Harlem, but I am not paying anywhere near. If one falls in my lap for 50, 80, 90 bucks, I'll do it. Otherwise, no way. No way am I paying, you know, gouger prices online. But Rochas Man is basically a sweet gourmand with lavender, green leaves, bergamot, jasmine, lily of the valley, musk, raspberry, with a base of coffee, vanilla, amber, patchouli, and sandalwood. And if you've smelled um, the way that Maurice Roussel uses musks and things like musk ravageur and stuff like that, you'll kind of have an idea of the way that the, he uses very similar musk styles in many of his fragrances, but this has this, it smells very close to New Harlem, and you can get this for 30 bucks. Um, so yes, apparently they're also putting out an intense version of this. One of the craziest bottles I think you'll ever see. Rochas Man. Okay, next on the list is actually a Dominique Ropion creation. Uh, well, Dominique Ropion and a couple other folks as well. It's not just Dominique Ropion, but he's one of the people. And, uh, this fragrance gets, uh, a very bad rep. Uh, and it's funny because Dominique Ropion is one of those fragrance, uh, one of those people that uh, folks will spend huge money to get access to his creations, and yet they'll poo-poo this. They'll put, they'll turn their nose up at this. This is called Brit Rhythm for him. This is the intense version, the Eau de Toilette intense version, which came out in 2015. But this is. Um, a well-made designer. This is a good designer that many people overlook. So this is a guilty pleasure for me. It's uh, peppermint, absinthe, wormwood, cumin in a designer, leather, amber, patchouli, tonka bean, cashmeran, and guyac wood. The way that the cashmeran is used is going to make this feel very designer as to people. But I still think this is a very good fragrance. Um, for a designer, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Brit Rhythm Eau de Toilette Intense. Okay, next on the list, we have some Paco Rabanne. So we have Ultra Red Man, and we have Ultra Violet Man. Now, I should hate these two fragrances because they are both completely synthetic and cheap. This is smelling. Uh, well, not cheap smelling, but synthetic smelling. And uh, so this is discontinued. This is supposed to be very similar to a fragrance by the house of Thierry Mugler called um, it's the orange one, uh, Ultra Zest, I think it was called Ultra Zest, and this is Blood Orange, Tonka Bean, Praline, Vanilla, and Patchouli, and again, should hate it, I don't, I actually really like the fragrance, and then this one I don't like as much, or it hasn't grown on me as much yet, but it's called Ultra Violet Man, and this came out in 2001, so this one actually came out long before Ultra Red Man. Um, apparently, this is still being marketed from what I hear. I did not know that. But it's got Russian coriander, Italian mint, ambergris, black pepper, crystallized moss, and patchouli in the base. And it's basically just sweet and synthetic. It almost smells like... Imagine if you could create a crystal out of this color, and then you made the crystal have a smell, right? That's what, it, that's what it smells like to me. Uh, it smells absolutely insane. And yet, I don't hate it. Even though it's ultra synthetic, I don't hate it. Uh, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Okay, 
Speaking of guilty pleasures, uh, fragrances that uh, you would think I would hate. Uh, this is one that most people are shocked that I actually like, but I, I do. I think this is uh, probably one of, I think this is the best version of Spice Bomb outside of the original. The original is good also, but this is called Spice Bomb Extreme. So the extreme version is black pepper, pimento, grapefruit, cinnamon, cumin, saffron, vanilla, amber, tobacco, and cistus. And the OG and the uh, extreme version are probably my two favorites. If I could get a vintage bottle of the OG Spice Bomb, I would do it. I would, I would get the original Spice Bomb from 2012 or whatever it was. That's an Olivier Poles creation, believe it or not. And um, this one, actually, the flanker, I don't know who did the flanker. But, you, but um, I would love to know. I would love to know who actually worked on the flanker. It's very similar to uh, Bulgari Man, apparently. I'll do a, uh, I will do a video on Bulgari Man soon. I've got a bunch of little decants to, to talk about. Um, but yeah, it's a good, I think it's a good designer tobacco, if you will. I think it's well made. The ingredients smell decent. What I will say is that it is now being marketed by L'Oreal. So maybe it was always L'Oreal, but, uh, let's see. Yeah. Luxury. It is. It's uh luxury products, LLC, uh, L'Oreal always I, I'm very cautious with them. Okay, so next on the list is a sweet fragrance, and it's sort of sweet and fruity with tobacco-like vibes, but uh, it's a Maurice Roussel creation as well, and it came out in 2004, so he did this just a year or two after doing New Harlem, and this is called Bogart Porom. So Bogart Porom actually has notes of, of lavender, water lily, bergamot, with what they say floral notes with tonka bean, vanilla, patchouli, and spices. It smells to me very similar to um, Amen, uh, Pure Havan. If you've ever smelled Pure Havan, which is also on this list, by the way, so I'll just show you now. Pure Havan is definitely on the list, uh, but these two could sort of be two peas in a pod. This could almost be like, uh, what would you say? Almost like um, uh, maybe like um, you know, discounted version of Pure Havan, okay? And, um, it, even though it doesn't have the tobacco note, it smells like there's tobacco in here, but you would be shocked this is a, uh, a, a this is a cheapie. Definitely a, um, guilty pleasure of mine. And I mentioned, um, Pure Havan, any of the flankers, really. They all have this very sweet patchouli Amen DNA. And Amen is the one that I'm going to highlight here because uh, most people would not think I would like a gourmand fragrance like Amen. It's got notes like caramel and um, coffee and, you know, these sweeter vanillas. and um, But I do. I love this. This is one of my favorite designers of all time. I think it's absolutely stunning. I think it's amazing. Uh, you, you, um, you pick the word and I think it's just great. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Amen. Um, and so I would love to find a vintage bottle of the original Angel from 92, what basically set this, uh, set this off, but I'm very happy with my, with my Amen bottles. Okay. Next on the list, this one's discontinued. This version is, they've reissued it. Rumor is it's different, but, uh, I really like this scent. It's uh, Valentino Uomo Intense. So you may not think I'm a fan of this DNA, but I am. I actually really like the, um, the iris. And even though this kind of does its own thing from Dior Om, you can see the, uh, you can sort of see the inspiration. This is like uh, inspired by Dior Homme Intense, I believe. Um, hence Valentino Womo Intense. But that iris and what really pushes this into the, to the category of something I really like is that leathery dry down. I love that iris combo with the leather. And yes, there's vanilla and Tonka bean and it's designer Tonka and it's sweet. But uh, man, I, I, I love this stuff, especially in, um, in winter. If you can find these older bottles that did not have sort of the spiked collar on top, go for it. Go for the older bottles uh, if you can. I don't know what the new ones are like. So, okay, three left. 
three left. So, and this is unranked. I'm not ranking this or anything like that, but you might think I hate this fragrance. I never show it on the channel. I never talk about it. It, it was a hype beast in Fragcom years ago. Um, and again, it's an Olivier Polish creation. So the man is just, uh, I mean, he's a machine. He has created some all-star designer scents. And then you talk about his work at Chanel now. And I mean, uh, I think he's one of, he could go down as one of the best perfumers. Definitely best father-son duo. Uh, but this is Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Parfum. I would love an older bottle of the Eau de Toilette. But uh, I'm very happy with this, actually. It's, uh, yes, it does open up with that very designer grapefruit. So that's the thing. It has this big designer grapefruit, bam, right there when you spray. And, uh, but give it a chance. You know, many people talk about the performance of this not being very good. Um, it is a beautiful date scent, if that's what you want to call it. It really pulls people closer to you. It's got that ambery tobacco. Just reapply. I mean, uh, this is a 100 ml bottle. Um, you could just reapply. You know, it's uh, it's kind of one of those things. And you can get these at discounters for 50 bucks or 60 I think. I don't know. It's not super expensive. But you would think that um, this would be something I wouldn't like. Maybe I'd move past it. I still enjoy this. I mean, I, I'm not going to bash this or anything like that. I think this is still a, um, I think this is a good fragrance. Um, would not mind wearing it. Actually, I would wear it. I usually wear this in the cooler weather. But you know what? This could work in the heat, too. This is one of... This is one of those fragrances that because the projection and sillage and all that stuff is so sort of close to you that absolutely nothing wrong with um, wearing this in the warmer weather. Although I think most people would wear it in the cold. Okay, final two. And the final two should be fun. So this is Sauvage. Now, to be fair, this is my one blue fragrance. Literally, I have one modern blue fragrance and this is it. And it's the Parfum which the Parfum for me is a completely different fragrance than the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette has that very screechy Ambroxan. You know, it's it, it has what uh, I would call the Ambroxan throw. You put it on and everyone in a 10-mile radius can smell you, right? It just goes everywhere. This doesn't have that. They've toned the Ambroxan way, way down in Sauvage Parfum. The Parfum version came out in 2019, I think. The original Sauvage was like 15 or 16, I can't remember. Um, the musks that are in this fragrance are actually very expensive. Uh, they're expensive musks. There's Salinese sandalwood, there's Virginia cedar, there's patchouli, uh, there's tonka bean, there's papau, New Guinea, vanilla, absolute. So they are using good ingredients. The sandalwood is what gets me in this scent. This beautiful lavender, Sichuan pepper, um which is a very professional, you know, this is a very more, much more professional fragrance than Sauvage EDT. The EDT is just like, throw, you know, and it's much more metallic. This tones down that metallic vibe and brings out more materials that smell at least somewhat passable for something real. You know, the sandalwood is better uh, than what you get in the EDT. And I would go one step further and say, I would swap this for a bottle of the uh, Elixir because the Elixir is actually my favorite Sauvage because it throws back to my favorite decade, the 80s. But I still like this. As a modern blue fragrance, uh, I think this is a good scent. Okay, I, I, I would not bash this. I could. I bashed Blue de Chanel. I won't bash this. Um, well, I bashed the Parfum of Blue de Chanel. I haven't done a video on the Eau de Parfum, which is... Um, if I was going to buy one version of Blue de Chanel, I would buy the Eau de Parfum, but I'm not going to because I have my one fragrance. And finally, it's very popular to hate on this house nowadays. And you know what? Um, again, many people, I think, because it gets popular, the fragrance gets popular, it's easy to kind of to gang up on the fragrance. And, and it's, it's, it's like the trendy thing to hate on Creed nowadays. And this is a fragrance I love. I mean, yes, it is uh, so, it's it's a fragrance that is so divisive to some people. They had to create their own sort of form and base notes and push them over there. Um, but I love this stuff. I, I absolutely love it. It uh, is probably the fragrance that 
got me sitting in the seat today talking to you because this had such an influence on me. And uh, I've owned like six or seven bottles in my lifetime, uh, and it is Aventus. Not the king. The king is Koros to me. King Koros. But uh, this is maybe the prince. Maybe Prince Aventus, since uh, Bourdon made Koros, and his pupil, Jean Christophe Hero, made Aventus. Maybe this can be the prince, okay? Now, this particular bottle here is, now you guys are got me wanting to wear this. Uh, this is a 2015. This is a 15 Y01. Hell of a batch uh, to, you, to you batch folks. Uh, and, um, you know, this is kind of one of those things where I will wear what I have left in my Aventus bottles, and that'll be it. I'm never buying another one. Actually, I'm never buying another new Creed. Um, Creed lost my faith for what they did, selling me a 2018 batch of Aventus that basically smelled nothing like any of the previous Aventus bottles I owned. It was absolutely horrendous. Uh, so until I get an apology from the company, I am not uh, going to be buying any new creeds. Uh, but I have a lot of creed to go through. I don't need any new ones, but I love this stuff. I love Aventus. I will always love Aventus. It will always have a special place in my heart. Um, you know, it, uh, it just, you want, you want to wear something modern smelling. I would take Aventus over Sauvage. I would take Aventus over, you know, many of these more modern, I would take it over something like Dolce & Gabbana the one or, um, you know, Aventus just has a special place. It always will for me. And so am I a, am I a crazed Aventus head? Uh, no. I mean, I understand its place. I understand, um, you know, the, the history behind it. And it's very interesting. If you really want to study some Aventus history, go hunt down the fragrances that Pierre Bourdon made that have a pineapple note in them. Uh, like this is actually one example. I just I just got it in uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's called um, it is called Cabaret Om. This is a discontinued fragrance. Uh, fragrance Buy.ca had bottles of the vintage. This is a one run fragrance, I think. Um, one one run. That was it. They never did a second run. And um, but this is pineapple. In the top, bergamot, rosemary, lavender, uh, sandalwood, oak moss, musk, tarragon, tonka, vetiver. But that pineapple in the top, um, this is one of like 25 fragrances or something, or 20 fragrances that Pierre Bourdon worked on between the late 90s and the mid 2000s that had a pineapple note. And then he passed that knowledge on to Jean Christophe Hero, who ended up creating the King Pineapple, basically, um, in Aventus. So, yes, interesting sort of backstory. Anyways, I'm rambling now, but that's my unboxing video. I hope you like the unboxing. And that is my um, fragrances that I should hate, but I actually really like because they're guilty pleasures. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's always a pleasure and an honor. Love doing these videos for you guys. Thanks to everyone who comments and likes and all the stuff you're supposed to do to help the algorithm. Although I've come to the point now where I'm like, forget the algorithm. You know what? Like it if if you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, you know, you're smart enough to know what to do. I don't have to tell you like and subscribe. And uh, I figure that's like self-explanatory stuff. People say I should say it, but you know what? Um, I'm not here for that. I'm not here to become YouTube famous or anything like that. I want to do these videos for you guys, the, the true frag heads who, uh, who enjoy this type of content. Think about how many fragrances we talked about in an hour and 18 minutes. Um, a whole ton of fragrances, probably more than some channels talk about all year in one video. So it's a pleasure. It's an honor. I can't wait to get to know the new stuff. Thank you, Hari, for being extremely fair and working with me. It's, it's, it's a pleasure, you know, doing business with, uh, friends of the channel, let's say. Um, so yes, cheers guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye now.